This podcast is part of the Batman Universe Podcast Network, hosted by the BatmanUniverse.net. Check out everything related to Batman and the entire Bat family at the BatmanUniverse.net, including news and original content related to comics, movies, television, merchandise, video games, and more. Also, check out some of the other unique podcasts that TBU has to offer. Consider supporting this podcast by becoming a patron on Patreon. Even $1 can go a long way in supporting this content that you enjoy. Look for a link over at thebatmanuniverse.net to offer your support now. And now, on with the show. We read the comics. You download the podcast and then listen and buy today hearing our reviews saves hours and hours as you read your way through Batman stories all night long for you Gotham's for you Beginners is a Batman podcast with two guys on the line. Talk off them all the time. Now everything is easy just for you. We read the comics. You download the podcast. It is Bad Books for Beginners Today Hello and welcome to this edition of TBU's Bad Books for Beginners, episode 204. My name is Jerry. And I'm Chris. And we are your hosts. On Bat Books for Beginners, we will examine story arcs with Batman and related characters. We'll give you the historical background of the book, break down the plot and the art, and give you our opinions so you can decide for yourself if they're worth a read. Today's Bat Book Chris and I are covering is Azrael, Death, Dark, Night. So Chris, tell us about this book. Thank you very much, Jerry. Jerry, let me think. Our house, uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash, Young? Yes. Yes? yes oh, absolutely. Hey. Wow. <laughs> Deep dive, yep. Jerry. Wow. Yep. Back from the old days. I haven't time. Yes, I have. Great, great job. Nice oh, to you with that. thank you. Thank you. Hello, Bat fans. Thank you very much for spending a part of your day with us. We are still holding off reviewing Batman number 188, <laughs> and today we are covering Azrael, Death's Dark Night. That's night with a K. This is this is a 144 full color soft cover trade paperback that published by DC Comics in July 2010, and it had a cover price of $14.99 U.S. originally. This trade paperback collects Azrael Death's Dark Knight issue numbers one through three under the Battle for the Cowl banner. Those issues were originally cover dated May through July of 2009. And those individually had a cover price of $2.99 U.S. It should be noted that this trade paperback also collects material from Detective Comics Annual number 11 and Batman Annual number 27. However, those stories and that material will not be covered on this episode or won't be our focus today. Just the three issues. This trade paperback appears to have only gone through one printing. Hmm. hmm. What does Maybe that mean? Tell there. <laughs> if you're interested in <laughs> obtaining a copy of the story, this does not appear to be available on Comixology. At the time of this recording, online vendors have copies of the trade going for around 8 to $20. Hmm. Kind of a broad range there. Yeah. The original three issues themselves, though, can be had for less than cover price from many online vendors, and that may be the route to go. Also of note, this series would serve as a prequel of sorts, or a launching pad, for an 18-issue run of the new Asriel. Spoiler alert, the character of Michael Washington Lane version of the character, and that title would run from December 2009 to May 2011. Now for some of our background for our creative teams, as per usual, I'll go off some online resources and my memory. 
Our writer is Fabian Nicienza. Fabian Nicienza was born December 31st, 1961, and if I'm doing the math right, I think that makes him age 30, 57. He was born in Buenos Aires, Argentina. He was four years old when his family moved to the United States. He grew up in New Jersey, and there he learned how to read and write from comic books. He first lived in Sayreville, New Jersey, and moved to Old Bridge Township, where he attended Madison Central High School. And he graduated there in 1979. He studied at Rutgers. He then interned at ABC Television before graduating in 1983 with a degree in advertising and public relations. Fabian Nicienza's first published comic story came in Cyforce, number nine, which was cover dated July 1987, and that was the title in Marvel's New Universe imprint, and that would probably be the first time I would encounter his work. In 1991, Nicienza joined with artist Rob Liefeld in globe plotting and writing the final three issues of New Mutants. Now, in those issues, Liefeld and Nicienza created the characters Deadpool and Shatterstar, as well as the super team X Force. He does have some numerous DC Comics credits. Those include Action Comics, Nightwing, and Red Robin. In 2016, for the comics company Shatner Singularity, he adapted a Stan Lee poem into the graphic novel Stan Lee's God's Woke. And that work won the 2017 Independent Publisher Book Outstanding Book of the Year Independent Voice Award. Hmm. And our artist for this is Fraser Irving and I don't recall if he's ever been mentioned on our podcast before, at least since Jerry and I have been co-hosting. Mm -hmm. Irving was born in 1970 in Ilford, Essex, England. Now, as you might suspect with any comics pro from the UK, he has worked on the series 2000 AD. Now, I first encountered uh, Irving's work on the title Seven Soldiers, uh, the Clarion, the Witch Boy miniseries, uh, issues one through four. He did that with Grant Morrison, uh, and that was back way back in 2005. God, it doesn't seem that long ago. He's also mm. worked on the titles Robin and Batman and Robin, also Marvel's Doctor Strange, and there were just a lot of single issues for both DC and Marvel, almost too numerous to mention, because he's never really had a successive string of a lot of issues with one particular title in my research. Uh, most recently, his... Uh, DC credit I found was for Justice League a few months back, and you can find Fraser Irving on Twitter, appropriately enough, at Fraser Irving. <laughs> Over on Amazon.com, this has a rating of 3.6 stars out of 5, just based on 5 reviews. And over on Goodreads.com, this has a rating of 2.83 stars out of 5, based on 77 ratings and 10 reviews. But mm. just what do Jerry and I think of this one <laughs> remains to be seen, and give us the story recap on this. I shall turn it back over to you, Jerry. Thanks, Chris. So we're going to talk about this story after a few messages from some of our friends. Sawate. My name is Stella, and I am the host of Backroll to Oracle, the Barbara Gordon podcast. Backroll to Oracle is a podcast dedicated to Barbara Gordon, the first woman to hold the mantle of Backroll for an extended period of time, roughly 1967 to 1988. The goal of Backroll to Oracle is to examine the character's history from her first appearance as Backroll and continuing through her tenure as Oracle. Each episode looks at a vintage issue of Detective Comics or Batman, as well as other books like Justice League and Freedom Fighters, and modern issues of Batgirl and Birds of Prey. I also keep track of news involving Batgirl and other members of the Bat family, and I have a revolving series of segments like Babs in the Tube, which highlights appearances of Babs in TV and film, Shipper Spaway, which looks at a variety of comic and pop culture couples, gives their history, and determines whether they are hot or not. Reading with Stella, which could be described as an audio drama, or just me reading a book that relates to Babs or doesn't. And of course, the mainstay literature recommendation. I've been blessed to interview writers Scott Beatty and Chuck Dixon on their back roll year one work, Brian Q. Miller on his back roll run, Dwayne Swarzynski and Christy Marks on their separate Birds of Prey work, and the creators and actors of the back roll spoiled the web series. I hope to interview more creators and actors in the future. My goal, most importantly, is to make a fun, entertaining, and thoughtful show that people enjoy and from which they learn. Find the show online at thebatmanuniverse.net and iTunes, and follow the show on Facebook and Twitter at Batgirl to Oracle. Thank you, and fly on, Babs lovers. Welcome back. Here is the story of Azrael, Death, Dark Knight. Jimmy the Bat, an undercover cop that has been involved in some kind of borderline activities, is killed by Azrael and his flaming sword, who declares that he serves God's justice. The GCPD's Sergeant Bullock investigates the crime. 
Some men from a shadowy organization see the story in the newspaper and say that they had given the killer the suit of sorrows only six weeks ago. They knew the killer was unstable because the order rushed the choice. They realize this Azrael needs to be removed from action, and they need to find another soldier of God. But where? They discuss one Michael Washington Lane, an ex-college football player, ex-marine, and ex-cop with anger issues. His son and wife are both dead, as were his brother and sister, all killed. He was in a secret program that the military and the GCPD jointly ran. This program identified replacements for Batman in case he was ever killed. Three men were chosen, and Lane was one. Talia al Ghul wants the Suit of Sorrows back. It was given to Bruce and stolen from the Batcave. She sends a group of wacko mercs to get it, (laughs) (laughs) and they're a bunch of crazies, and assume the cop killer has it. The Bat family is also looking for the killer. They suspect uh, John Paul Valley is Azrael again, but they're not sure. A bat signal shines in the Gotham sky, but it has R.I.P. inside the bat. A man comes up to Michael Lane and asks him if he is in next in line to be Batman. This sets Lane off, but the two eventually talk. The man explains that they are from the Order of St. Dumas, an offshoot of the Knights Templar. The associated gear with that they have is the Suit of Sorrows, the Sword of Sin, and the Sword of Salvation. The Order has the Suit and the Sword of Sin and wonder if Lane wants to wear them. The only problem is that the suit makes you crazy over time. Lane accepts, but only if they remove the bat symbol from the suit. They agree. Talia's gang attack the Order. Lane grabs the suit and sword and starts killing them and declares himself to be Azrael. Talia shows up with the Sword of Salvation and runs him through. Now this sets off some brain chemistry, doesn't kill him, Azrael gets better and kills some more of the guys and fights Talia. She tells him that the suit drives you crazy. They stop fighting. Talia says she wants the suit for her son and that the kid is strong enough to handle the madness. Lane realizes she's talking about Damien or at least Robin the Bat Boy. And Azrael then leaves the scene. The Order tells Michael about the madness of the suit and shows him the last Azrael. He's nuts. Michael visits his mute mother and frets about his situation. Oracle wonders if Osriel is John Paul Valley or not. The next day, Bullock is investigating all of this new mayhem. There's a traffic camera nearby, and he sends one of his men to the DMV for the video. That cop, Ferrelli, sees Michael Lane on the camera. Uh Uh-oh, I know who that is. So he lies to Bullock (laughs) and said, nope, I didn't see anyone on the tape. Why do you do that? Azrael heads over to the Batcave where he confronts Nightwing. They fight. Nightwing asks if he killed a cop. Azrael says he didn't. They argue about their motivations and decide to stop fighting. Nightwing asks him how he knew to come to the Batcave. So they see a guy in a weird Batman outfit on the bat screen. Azrael said someone must have found his old bat suit from the training days. He goes to stop the imposter, but is shocked by a force field. Nightwing knows about the backup Batman and realizes that this must be one of them. He tells Oracle who it is, and the location of the Batcave must have been in- implanted into his subconscious. Nightwing gives him some kind of hypodermic. Nightwing then goes to Talia. He wants Lane to keep the suit of sorrows and the two swords and says he'll keep an eye on him. Lane wakes up, finds the suit and swords, and is visited by his dead brother's wife. They make love. Rachel Ghoul has eyes on them and declares he wants the suit back. The order gives Lane a brownstone as a headquarters. The cop Ferrelli visits Lane and says he can try to protect him, but please keep the violence to a minimum. Lane suits up as Azrael and sets out to kill evildoers. The end. So Chris and I are going to talk about our feelings for the story after these words from some of our friends. Beautiful as Aphrodite. Wise as Athena. Stronger than Hercules. Swifter than Mercury. 
explore the 75-year history of the Amazon princess with Wonder Woman, Warrior for Peace, a monthly podcast available on iTunes, Stitcher, and at wonderwomanwarriorforpeace.wordpress.com. Welcome back. All right, Chris, what'd you think? (laughs) Jerry, this is a bit of a tough putt, and I don't want to give this any short shrift. When we got this assignment, I had a little bit of feeling of dread with this, Mm -hmm. and I knew that I really wasn't fond of the Ezreal character and any latter incarnations, and am I going to give this a Uh, fair shake? And then I read it, and I really couldn't think of too many positives. But then I challenged myself, and I said, well, Chris, what if you took the other side of the argument? Could Mm -hmm. you win a debate if you were going to recommend this to somebody? Mm -hmm. And Jerry, I tried and tried and tried, but I really couldn't come up with <laughs> just things as as a comic book fan to try to really sell this if I was mm-hmm. going to convince somebody to pick this up. Did it cover any new ground? Did this uh, character resonate with me? Was any of this necessary? Did this last? Did this give uh, the Batman universe any lasting impact? Yeah. And and I'm just shaking my head and said, no, well, does it stand alone as at least a decent comic book tale? Was the writing and the art complimentary? Were the characters as you saw them in good voice? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, was, was this an average comic book? Well, mm-hmm. not so much. I, I, I think uh, mm-hmm. the artwork for me here and there, but I, I did find this awfully confusing in places. And mm-hmm. I really have to commend you with uh, your story recap because... I don't know if you if you how many passes you took at this, but there were places where I was literally lost. Yeah. And when you get lost, sometimes you don't get invested as much. And I, I tried to stay with it. I, I got a good handle on it, I think. But when the dust settled, I, I, I just I, I just really had no impact on this. And as this setting up for a springboard for a new DC ongoing, oof. Wow, I, I I don't know if too many people would want to part with their bucks mm-hmm. after after they saw this and and want to continue uh, this storyline. Mm-hmm. I I really had some issues with it. Those were my initial impressions. I'm cautiously going to ask you what you were thinking. <laughs> well, I agree. This was really confusing, right? So you have Azrael, who's kind of you know sometimes has a bat on his chest. And then other times there's kind of a Batman suit and the two suits look the same. You have two different Asriels in this story, plus this other bat suit. You have multiple flashbacks. You know, you're, you're trying to figure out what is happening in a given moment. And to be really frank with you, if there's somebody out there that really knows the story and listens to my recap, I have no doubt I've got something wrong because I was very confused by the story. It, there was just too many things that were similar, but a little different. And, oh, that was in the past or, oh, that is, you know, happening now. Uh, I was pretty lost here. Um, you, you mentioned the art was hit and miss. I think there were some places that some panels and some pages that look great, but overall, I don't think the art was, I mean, I wasn't blown away by the art. Um, and in terms of Asriel as a character, I think it's a better idea for a character than it actually ever really turns out to be. I mean, it's cool, like this whole, this old ancient order, Knights Templar, but then it gets into this gear thing where we have this the magic suit and this magic sword and that magic sword and they do different things it gets a little D &D for me um in terms of a like a gotham city story and um i this just didn't grab me i would you know i think you know this is a setup for a new asriel story I, you know, you said it got 18, you said it got 18 issues? Yeah, run of 18 issues. Wow. This, yes. That seems like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, to be I, fair, it was a different creative team, I, I and, uh, you know, they, they might have uh, run with it a little bit differently. Uh, 18 mm. is an, a respectable run, but uh, nonetheless, um, I... I I'm kind of. I was kind of surprised at that uh, high tally myself. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when I, when I saw that. Yeah. And I, I just, I totally forgot uh, that uh, he there was an 18 issue run after this of 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 this character, and I thought, yeah. oh, interesting. okay. <laughs> somebody <laughs> somebody bought it for a while. <laughs> I don't. Know yeah, yeah, definitely. That. It'd be interesting to look at the at the numbers in this, how it how it progressed. So I guess it was. Um, 
Um, this uh, Lane guy, he was Azrael for the whole run? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, so we're talking about, you know, if this is average, if it's better, if it's not quite good enough to be average, where would you put this in, in like a rating scale? Well, Jerry, you know, I, I'm trying to walk away with some positives on this. Um, Talia was in perfect voice. Uh, Nightwing mm-hmm. was, in, was in good voice. Mm-hmm. Did they sell me on the Michael Lane character? I, I, I can't see anything uh, of interest there, of which makes yeah. me sympathetic or want to like this character. Mm-hmm. I, I, I tried. I, I tried to be open-minded about it, but it, uh, I, I just uh, didn't have any feeling. Um, am I being somewhat biased because I didn't necessarily care for the Jean-Paul Valley uh, in in character as it was mm-hmm. and how that thing was pitched as a longtime Batman fan for decades prior to uh, the events of uh, Bane ba- breaking Batman's back. Sure. Possibly, but uh, you know, I think he he's sort of there in in in, in the Batman family. I, I think it certainly can be argued he's he's not first and front and foremost with that. Uh, as I'm sure there's a diehard <laughs> Ezreal fan out there, but I, I don't know of any, uh, and I don't know if anyone is climbing for this. Uh, this this court has sort of came and went in, in the annals of Batman history, and mm-hmm. uh, just sort of a mild blip. In of his uniqueness, uh, what was different about this? Well, you know, having the GCB considering you know a recruitment thing with with a Batman replacement, mm-hmm. I think was sort of kind of different uh it, it sounds familiar but offhand i can't tell if, if it was used anywhere else but that that, that was sort of somewhat of an intriguing idea mm-hmm. but i i'm just gonna have to land on a two out of, okay. out of five with this uh, the, the the creative team I, i've seen them do much better work on other t- respective titles and uh, it's, it's not the worst thing i've ever read but uh i, I just I, I can't recommend it maybe for uh, if you're a completist if you if you and there's probably one to be out there, but I, I am very sorry. And uh, Jerry, when we went to record this episode, I said beforehand, this is one I had a lot of trepidation with mm-hmm. because I, I, I thought, make sure you look under every rock and, 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 and don't try to be unfair to the audience, to the listener, to, sure. who, who is a fan of the Batman and, and of Asriel, and, and do it some just service. You know, I, I remember a scene in Animal House where uh, the Deltas come in and they get their little kangaroo court moment, and they similarly just gets dismissed by Niedermeyer and Dean Wormer saying, nope, move on. We're gonna, they, they, we didn't have a chance for them to present their case. Right. You know, they just basically all hummed and walked out of the room, and I hope we didn't do it on this show. Uh, we, mm. I think we were trying to be fair and look at many aspects of this with respect to the story, the voice, the art, compelling characterizations. Mm -hmm. Just didn't see it here. I I can't say it's a must read unless you're really a diehard Azrael fan. Yeah. How about you? Yeah, I think I am going to have to come in pretty close to you. I gave this when I first, you know, wrote up the script here, I gave it two and a half batarangs thinking it was kind of very average, but you know, even going through the, the synopsis, I'm like, It's very confusing, and I'm realizing how much of the story I really even still don't have a handle on. And I read this several times. Um, I think I'm going to have I think I'm going to have to come down to two uh, batarangs out of five as well. It was just confusing, and for me personally, there's really nothing in here for me. I'm not a big Asriel fan. Um, uh, Lane didn't compel me. You know, it wasn't like, oh, there's a cool guy. They're going to be able to do something with this. It was just kind of like, boy, he had a lot of tough things happen to him. He's almost defined, his character is defined by what he's lost. And that just didn't really seem to be enough to grab me. For I think you you hit the nail on the head, Chris, when you said this is something if you really are an Asriel fan, you know, this is something that I could see that you might might enjoy a different uh, a change to the character, um, a change to the kind of personnel of the character. And, you know, if there's 18 issues, that's definitely something you're going to want to, um, you know, be familiar with uh, as an Asriel fan. But I'm just personally not. So I'm going to have to be there with you at two, at two batarangs even. Oh, well. <laughs> okay. Well, I can't hit a home run every time, you know. <laughs> <Some of those laughs> <shows>. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. 
Well, so now folks out there, I'm sure you know by now that uh, we do some other things outside of Bat Books for Beginners. Um, Chris, uh, which you can find out at uh, Twitter at BTO and Bat Books, you do some great work over there on the Bat Girl to Oracle podcast. Well, thank you very much, Jerry. Yeah, I recorded the segment for April uh, about a week ago, so that should be dropping sometime this week. I know the talented Stella, the host of the show, she's enjoying herself out in Broadway. Uh, as at the time of this recording, she got a showing of Kiss Me Kate, a, a nice. show I'm familiar with. Yeah. I, I got to uh, assist and direct a local production of that. Yeah. And uh, I was very, very happy for her to uh, go, go and see a, a great show and uh, mm-hmm. and have fun out out in the Big Apple. And that was really, really <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah, so thank you very much. Over on the Back World of Oracle podcast, I have a segment, uh, Chris's Cornucopia of Curiosities, Ooh. as it's been dubbed by Stella, where I look at the Batman Adventures title from the early 1990s to mid-90s based on the animated series, which mm-hmm. ran at the same time. And these were a lot of uh, one-and-done stories with great, great storytelling and great artwork. I'm also looking at the Nightwing title mm. from a shipper's perspective in a segment within a segment that I call Nightwatch, just to see if there's any romance going on Ooh. with uh, Rick Grayson at the moment, and I, I'm having a lot of fun with it. So thank you very much. But Jerry, I know the listeners can find you on Twitter at Professor Frenzy, mm-hmm. and you have the great distinction of writing some fantastic written reviews of some of my favorite Batman family characters, uh, Batgirl and Catwoman, to yeah. be specific, where can they find that? Well, you can go over to the BatmanUniverse.net and check out my reviews for Batgirl and Catwoman. Uh, on Twitter, at Professor Frenzy, I also tweet out my weekly comics. We talk about indie comics a lot. Um, t- tweet about Dark Shadows. We tweet about uh, horror movies at the hashtag Svengoolie. Uh Last night we saw um, this happens on Saturday at 8 o'clock uh, Eastern Time. And uh, Svengoolie showed House of Dracula last night, which I really is one of my favorites. Uh, I'm also doing a segment on the podcast Monster Kid Radio, and I just started that, and I'm covering uh, EC Horror Comics. So um, just a quick five-minute segment, uh, but I'm having a lot of fun doing it on the really terrific podcast Monster Kid Radio. Well, Jerry, I, I'm glad you got a chance to mention that because uh-huh. if you have any – this is both for, I would think, it was a great segment. Oh, I heard it. You. I loved it. Oh. I thought you did a masterful job with it, and I applaud you with how you executed oh, that. It was you. really, really well done. And this is a slice of comics that I really, really am glad you're taking a good look at. And this is something for longtime EC fans, or if you've never, ever read an EC horror comic in your life, mm-hmm. this this is this will fit for both of you, because yeah. this has such a broad appeal, and it is really, really great stuff when you mm-hmm. take those old horror comic stories apart. And these were classic stories, well done writing, well done artwork, and yeah. just, just, this was like a real golden age of comics there. And I, I am so glad you're taking oh. a deep dive into those and with the retellings of those. Just a fantastic job. Oh, thank you. You know, it's I, I really love those uh, EC comics. And now this is a, you know, a five minute uh, segment. But if folks out there really do like uh, EC comics, our good friend uh, Herman does a terrific show where he does an even deeper dive. And that show is The Long Box of Darkness. So definitely if you're an EC horror um, comic fan, uh, check me out out on uh on monster kid radio and check herman out on long box of darkness that's great stuff over there now also don't forget to check chris and i out on the professor frenzy show by the time this episode is aired we are creeping up on episode 50 i think we're at 49 now so yeah it's coming up and that's the podcast chris and i have on indie comics and other pop culture topics and uh we've been having a lot of fun uh doing that so go over check that show out you can search on iTunes for the Professor Frenzy show and uh, enjoy that one too. We got some comments Ooh. from our good friend Ian Miller, and he's on Twitter at IBM Miller. Mm-hmm. And you can find Ian on the Batman Universe Comic Podcast, where he offers great. some great opinions, and along with all the other co-hosts there. And Ian, you are so insightful, yeah. and I can't thank you enough for always taking the time to chime in with what you think of what we did. Yep. Uh, you know, with you doing with Stephanie and Dustin, you do a great, great job over there. Yep. But uh, you always seem to make the time. And for the last episode, we discussed the Gotham City Sirens' first few Mm -hmm. issues. And Ian, you chimed in and you said the following. I do want to kind of push back on the issue of the art. Mm -hmm. 
It's definitely extremely sensual, but none of the characters lose their power or agency through their attractiveness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fair. and uh, that is a fair point. We we did say, I think, I thought it kind of was walking a tightrope with the, the uh, uh, cheesecakiness perhaps a little mm-hmm. bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe some gratuitous derriere shots here and there. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, certainly in voice, and these, these are attractive women sure. uh and i th- i think you 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 do make a fire fair point ian uh you continue to say uh, this episode inspired me to pick up the book to reread Excellent. in the new comicsology sale yes though i will never get the second volume <laughs> which seems determined <laughs> to burn down everything i enjoyed about the first half yes thank you ian uh you continue to say uh, dini paul dini remains a true master at all of the voices and this is some of gillam best gillam march's best artwork mm-hmm. however the other writers simply aren't nearly as appealing to me in their takes on the characters particularly in the plot lines mm-hmm. yeah thank you so much Ian. i really appreciate that uh jerry I, I think you chimed in saying you know that uh so many of the team ups had their ups and downs mm-hmm. yes yeah definitely i mean you know you see you see you know birds of prey and and the sirens and so many team ups you know they get their good times and you have your times where it doesn't really work i think you know especially for the sirens i think in a lot of cases um it's it's really what happens not so much in these stories i mean that's really important to to the sirens obviously but also you know when in other stories like uh um uh, you know uh, poison ivy had her um uh, i think it was a six issue um mini series she had and you know the relationship with harley was a big part of that and the relationship with catwoman was a part of that so it's really kind of it's not so much the comic book of, of the sirens but it's also how it affects these characters when they appear in other places that um, I think, do you remember this was a couple of years back? They had uh, I think it was part of the Harley Quinn uh, series where they had a road trip special. And, yes. And I really like that. And I, I just think that these, these three characters together make compelling reading. Yeah. Uh, I believe Amanda Connor did one yeah. of the covers there. Just a lot of, a lot of fun. Yep. I thought that was a great, great one shot there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that's, that's my feelings for these. I, and I just love the, the three characters, <laughs> all of them individually. Yeah. And yeah. Together. They, they, they are, they are really good. And, uh, yeah. And I'm, I'm glad you chimed in with respect to your thoughts with respect to the art on that as well. Mm-hmm. Ian. It, it does give one cause. And I, yeah. I just wanted to at least put this out there that maybe somebody might take issue but yeah I, I as a reader i thought it was in, in the most part okay yeah yeah yep. and i i am glad with uh, that you chimed in as well yeah for sure if anyone out there would like to leave a comment uh probably the biggest space you inform you would have to do so would be over on the batman universe website when our new issues uh, new episodes drop excuse me <laughs> uh, you will have a comment page over on the uh, homepage feed at the batman universe.net uh, you can certainly uh, do comments on twitter you may not have as much space but feel free if you sure. if you'd like to leave us comments we highly encourage you to do so and we really really sincerely appreciate the feedback mm-hmm. well speaking of twitter we did get a lot of likes and retweets on the past episode and jerry can i give those fine folks a nice shout out yes please do chris great well first up we had ben jones thank you very much ben jones you can find him on twitter at gambit 896 we heard from ocean man take me by the hand at dr girlfriend thank you so much we heard from Batman's Bookcase at oh, Batman's yes. Bookcase. We heard from Secret Wars and Beyond podcast at Sean42AZ. Oh. Thanks so much, Sean. You can yeah. find Sean. He's the co-host of the Secret Wars and Beyond podcast and the Nerdy Dads podcast and that new What If podcast. We heard from our good friend Green Lantern HG awesome. at Green Lantern HG. Michael Morris at Mike Morris 1017 Robin nice. Stevens at Robin 031 oh. Robin Hicks at reading underscore Hicks. Thanks so much, Paul. Co host yeah. along with at Avant Guard, the Doom Patrol podcast, and their Twitter feed is WFD Pod and the fine DC Events podcast yeah. at DC OCD Cast. Great, great stuff, gentlemen. Thank you so much. The Batman Universe and their Twitter feed is at Batman Universe. Mm -hmm. Heard from our good friend Randy. Hey, it's Randy. Randy, Randy, the comics nerd, and he's on Twitter at Randall Andrews One. We heard from the First Issue Club at First Issue Club. That's a podcast hyping and reviewing all the weekly talked about number one issued comics. We heard from our good friend Dave. Dave's at Lava Hog at Lava Hog does the Selling Out Show, and that Twitter feed is at Selling Out Show. That's a podcast about screwing up life at 
<laughs> their leisure for your listening pleasure. Fine, fine stuff there. I, I want to give a nice shout out to Dave. He uh, patted me on the back when I had a down moment over there, and he's, uh-huh. he, he saw something that uh, hey, hey, you know, a uh, little bit, uh, you know, I want to get your back, buddy. So I really appreciate that, Dave. So That's thanks awesome. so much, and I really appreciate that. And That's a great guy. Lots of love and uh, right back at you, listeners. Thank you very, very much for your time. Yes, definitely. Well, that's all we have for today. Please join us next time when Chris and I will cover Batwoman eulogy. My name is Jerry. And I'm Chris. And thank you for listening to Bat Books for Beginners. We read the comics. You download the podcast and then listen and buy today hearing our reviews saves hours and hours as you read your way through batman stories all night long for you gotham's for you Batman podcast with two guys on the line talk off them all the time now everything is easy just for you we read the comics you download the podcast it is Bad books for beginners today.